My name is Lucille Tanazes. Uh, I have been teaching now as well as practicing design for the last 35 years. And of course when I started we called it graphic design and as an educator now I'm very conscious of how one defines graphic design versus say a more holistic phrase called communication design. So for us uh, as educators we are constantly aware that our profession is sort of a moving target. That it starts, um, that it's constantly defining itself. It's defining the practice, it's de defining the definition and the kinds of people it attracts into the field. And so for me, even now as an educator, I'm always thinking how can I be relevant to this ever increasing complex profession and discipline. And this is my, I guess my, uh, my yardstick, is that every year I get older, but every year my students are 21. And so if that age gap constantly widens, so I always rethink and reinvent what this discipline is so that it makes sense to them. And so I can only teach them that they have to be adaptable, that they still have to use their bodies because their bodies are still, I mean, we're not robots. We're still having our appendages, our hands, our, our brains and that the practice is also about a discipline that will emanate from your head. Your computer will be gone. You will no longer have a cell phone or a smartphone. And so I said, how do you imagine yourself practicing as a graphic designer if the tools that you use now are obsolete? I think because graphic design or communication design deals with communication, I always tell my students the, the best way is to understand yourself first. When you go to another context or another client, let's just say, you know, you know, you have to understand them, but you have to understand yourself first because it's not about you being enslaved by them. You know, people say design is a service industry, and I really, I don't believe that. Maybe at the beginning, we were, at the, we were working at the behest of a client, of a need, and we had to respond to those needs. To me, over time, I've realized that it's really about meeting people midway so that you and them are equals. It's really about you meeting them and understanding, oh, you're maybe from another discipline. You're a rocket scientist. I'm not. I'm a designer. Okay. And then how do I then make myself credible to you? And, you know, you know how do I teach that? And I tell them, know yourself. Know what your strengths are. Know what you can offer. And then as soon as you know that, they see in you a confidence that yes, this is a person who knows who they are and they can make an effort to know me. Okay, then we can design. It's not even about like, okay, dealing with, you know, what, what's your portfolio like? Because at the end of the day, the portfolio will get you into the room because they like it. They appreciate it. But it's not a beauty contest of a portfolio. It is really about understanding if this person is somebody I can have lunch with and actually get me and understand me as a human being first, that's where we can get started. Beyond that, you know, and, and if the portfolio is good, you're home free. But you know, the trust is crucial at the beginning because I think that if they don't trust you, they're not gonna hire you. <laughs>